right? So you don't have your white ribbon on, but I do. So I'm just going to say we are characters existing within the day where they cut it's the ribbon. It's before I got the ribbon. Before Nesta does it because she's third. Yeah, and not because I just couldn't find a ribbon in my house. It's you because it, was, it was a choice. It was a choice I made so that it was just before she did it, before I've got my own ribbon. Um, I personally did actually go through the ribbon ceremony. Like I cut. It, oh, you yeah. did it. So you are Valkyrie now. I am Valkyrie, technically. Wow. Thank you. You don't just dress it. She walks the walk yep. as well. And you just take my word for it, okay? All right. I mean, yeah, we don't need to see any proof. No. I trust you completely. Thank and isn't you. it nice that family trusts you? You should never trust family. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. I, it is definitely, uh, it is a bad idea for some, but a great idea for some others. And I think that we're, uh, I think that, you know what? I trust Natalie. And honestly, if there's anyone in this room that could be Valkyrie, it is you. Oh my yeah, goodness. You're welcome. Thank and I just remembered so. I didn't shut my phone off. So I got to do that now, even though we're on camera, but I got to do it because I got to stop talking about Dune. I got to stop talking about the movie Dune. What am I, a rude Duner? No, no I'm a fave. Get out of here, Duners. No, the you problem, can stay. Stay. I, yeah, please stay because uh, I'm not a rude Duner, but I am married to one. And uh, the, the movie tickets just became available. So if you're listening to this, go to your AMC app. I am a Stubbs member. You, yes. You are a rude Duner through marriage. Through marriage, yes. I am. I am. I've married into it. And I guess that makes me a worm. Is that what the spouses are? Or I feel like I'm covered in sand. Like, I feel like if I have to, if I'm married into rude doonership. There's sand everywhere. In every, every crevasse. Crib, every single one. You got to really get in there with like a blaster hose. Yeah. Can you imagine them banging in those caves? Ouchie, ouch, ouch. I, I like, I mm -mm. banged on a beach a handful of times. And every time when you get all the like the sand rashes. Yeah, it's not sexy it hurts no and there's a bunch of like mites in the sand or maybe that's just florida sand oh yeah those things that like look sort of like no seums is what they call them the bigger ones right the well ones there's that, like the, blah, 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 you like, can kind of see the no seums but they call them no seums with because the, like they're the little the little ones that you see but then they also bite you i love the ocean they but also it is, bite the ocean you. is terrifying but i love it yeah man i don't um, I'm terrified of it, but I, and I respect its power. Um, yes, you must, you should. I'm very scared of the ocean. I'm scared of all bodies of Get water. Get prepared because we're going on a cruise soon. I, you know, you, you, we keep, I feel like I'm being like threatened that we're going on a cruise, but my problem is my algorithm on TikTok has become so many, not only following people that are on the nine month cruise, but also, oh, yeah. uh, which <laughs> get me on that nine month cruise, oh, man. except not no, no. At all. Are you kidding me? Not it at looks like all. a disaster. It looks, it, I can't, I, I love the people like, this is going to be the greatest experience of our lives. Let's give over our life savings. I'm going to live on the cruise ship forever. Mm. And I, you you know what? I'm proud of them. I think that's good for them. The thing is, some people do cruise for the rest of their end of their life, but they go and step like they different get ones. off and on the boats and stuff. They don't yes. just stay on it for one nine months. The problem is they got to go through what is it called? Drake's passage, like the passage that is like started no. from the bottom. Now it hit. Yeah. I there's something about this passage that is very, very scary to go through. Yeah, it's dangerous as fuck. And so now I've got all these TikToks showing the waves as people go through the passage, and it's very scary. But then they put this, like, Viking music over it that makes it even scarier. You know what they I'm need? not ready to go to Valhalla. They need the Elaine, the Feyre, and the Nesta. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I know we're doing Akadar right now, but I kind of thought you meant they need to be doing the Elaine. Oh, my brain! Oh, the my brain came up over my face! <laughs> A Gil Lane from Seinfeld. Yeah, just kicking it out. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe it would help counteract the the massive uh, amounts of seasickness they're all receiving from the rock. Man, we're going to puke so much, plus all the drinking we're going to do on the cruise. We say this as if we've done any research into going on a cruise, but the family keeps threatening a cruise. No, we're doing it. We're, we're going to go on this cruise. But we're also, we might be wearing some great jewelry while we go on this cruise because we did want to shout out an amazing, oh amazing God. jewelry maker that sent us these beautiful pieces, including 
Cassian siphon bracelet. Oh my god, I'm I'm in love. I'm currently wearing Nesta's earrings that are Shit. unbelievable. It's so pretty. I just want to say thank you so much, Taylor at Dames a la Mode. Dames a la Mode. She makes unbelievable jewelry. Um, I apologize. Oh my, they make s- unbelievable sincerely. jewelry. And it, like including Adriata earrings and uh there's a Valaris pendant. Check also, out Dames a la Mode because this this it's truly beautiful. It's it, truly it really beautiful. is. Thank and, you and so much. Also, uh, sometimes we don't get our mail for many months. So we yes. apologize. So we apologize. If you send something to us and we don't see it or we don't, you know, like this is so exciting. And we're so happy. And thank you so much for this. Um, and I think you sent it many months ago. And we apologize. Yes. And um, we appreciate you. But also check out damesalamode.com. Uh, speaking of dames... All is it us? Us in a mode of oh. new space. Oh, I thought you meant we have ice cream on our heads. No, nope. I looked up and there was ice cream on my head. I'd be like, "How did you get it there, you witch?" Valkyrie. That's what happens. You oh oh oh. So she splices the ribbon and now she puts ice cream on my head. <laughs> That's what you know. The Valkyrie are always doing. They go Sunday, Sunday. And I'm like, stop, <laughs> stop. I don't want chocolate syrup on me. Yeah, but they do it in just like sexy teddies. Whoa! And they're like ice cream fight. Stop. Is this because of the the sleepover? I did. Yes, wear my friendship bracelets again. Though I might not have a ribbon, but I do have. Swifty bracelets on. Um, we should have learned how to make friendship bracelets, but we are we're not committed to the, the art. Can't live your life and shoulda coulda wouldas. But anyway, what I was going to say is, if you're watching this, you probably notice we're in a different space. We are in a brand new studio, and it is still being moved and built up around us. We're very excited to but be here. We don't but stop our, the content. Our rose wall is missing. However, the map. Is still is here, still although here. it is it's a it little is. washed out against the wood. It's Let's a little, be real. Yep. Can't hardly see it. And I can't hardly wait for some for to kiss Jennifer Love Hewitt. Ah, uh, yes, I love that movie. Yes, it's a good movie because Barry Manilow is in it. They use a slur that we are not allowed to say and we A lot apologize. of those nineties movies, man. Some of them you just can't go back to, and that's okay. But the, you know, you gotta watch them to learn. I man. Ethan Embry in that time period. Wow. I mean, way more and em- in this time period. I mean, yes, yeah, still. Bobble, bobble. Uh, not to, uh, you know, be rude because he's married <laughs> to sorry, a very funny to, woman, but. Not to disrespect. <laughs> Mark and Empire Records was a sexuality wow. choice for me. Yes. During my, after the Leo, Romeo plus Juliet. I get it. Era went to Mark from Empire Records. Completely understand. See, mine was from Ethan Embry and Can't Hardly Wait, but just specifically because he liked and Barry knew Barry Manilow. Yeah. And that is why I needed, also because he was the nice guy. I obviously was always into the nice guy. The nice guy never wanted me. See, I le- I loved him in Empire Records because I always chased the burnouts. Ah, so. ah Really delving in today. Yep. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> So many of you, by the way, wrote in to tell me that there is much speculation that the fourth oh. object from the prison is something we cannot discuss on the show we because it's discuss it. part of the Crescent City series. But if you've missed our live stream, it'll be up on YouTube here soon. And already it's already up on the Twitch channel under LPN TV. And I'm we, sure we will get into it. Get I can into guarantee it. I'm talking we're about the, get into it. the future. We haven't done it yet as we record, but I'm certain we will discuss it. Uh, yeah, especially as I'm pulling apart all the theories for Crescent City that everyone has written in. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time to write those in because so cool. And I just it's making me just go all over the place. It makes me want to immediately read them again. I'm mad that I'm not reading them again. I'm mad that I'm not reading Throne of Glass right now because I'm in Iron Flame. I can't stop Fourth Wing right now. I I can't stop the train. Well, especially with Throne of Glass, you are dedicating, you're committing. There's a lot. Yeah. I and part of me I wish I know this is sad. This is a sad thing to say. I've heard tale that it doesn't get smutty until what, like the fifth book? Well, okay. I will say this because I'm only on the second book and I'm not giving spoilers away no or anything. Spoilers. Um, and people kept saying, just skip the first two. I can't. I have to do. I'm a completist. I need to see Maybe it all. Can you just but, sit down and I'll get really high and you just do what you do for Akatar, but do it for me for the first two books of the Yeah, I can do that. Just like a private session. You can definitely, if you're not, if it doesn't make your brain itch, you no. can skip them. My brain itch is about many things, but a completist I am not. And I uh, I thank my brain for that because I'm surprised I'm not a completist. Thank you, brain. Thank you, brain. I actually usually, I'm the opposite. I never watch the last episode of things. I also actually 
often do that too, especially if I'm upset about it being over. over. Or if I love a show and it gets canceled, mm-hmm. I usually can't watch the last because you know episode, it doesn't get it's not the end, yeah. and then I'm mad. Yeah, so I'd rather just not know. Yeah. And it is, uh, I think it's it's almost sad to be at that place where I'm like, I can't let the world die. Yeah, I get it. I'm, I'm with you on that. So I, I do get it. And you know what? Parenthood, maybe I'll never know if Craig T. Nelson dies. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. Spoiler, not spoiler. Um, did he actually die? Maybe I should take that out. Maybe what? I shouldn't say that. Do you think, I think you're allowed to spoil the TV show Parenthood. Well, I, I mean, then he, I don't know if he dies or not. Well, yeah, Parenthood was a while ago, so I guess it's fine. Did Craig T. Nelson die? I really hope not. Even if he's a corpse, I'd get in, uh, I'd get in that coffin. Whoa. I'm obsessed with Craig I mean, T. Nelson. He's no, he's still alive. Very sexy in um, Poltergeist, for sure. He's sexy in Poltergeist. He's sexy in the Family Stone. Yeah, I said it. He was sexy in Coach. Not in Coach. Yes, he was no, sexy in Coach. That's not my style. All right, and maybe not. But he also just thinking about him as Mr. Incredible is um, sexy. Oh, is he as well. Mr. Incredible? Yeah, that's fun. I love Craig T. Nelson because Craig T. Nelson. I'm always sexually attracted to him because in Poltergeist. He listens to his wife. They have such a cute wife, marriage. And they get high. They and get the high wife together. says, the house is haunted. And he doesn't go, babe, you sure? He goes, okay, what do you want to do? Yeah, you're and right. And that is the sexiest way. Like, I, it created such a conversation. It was before Jeff and I got married. Interesting. That I looked at him and was like, that is what I always want. And he's like, I will never. He's like, if you say something's haunted, I'm listening. I love it. And Porter I appreciate Guys is like that. top five, top ten movie for me in, in the world. I love it. Oh, so yeah. Much. It, it um, never gets old. No. Oh, God. My glove, my, what is this called? Gauntlet? Gauntlet, can you tie it? It's going to come off, and then I'm going to be naked in front of everybody on the show. Guys, Thank I know you. we're going off on some tangents. We're in this new space, and we're all feeling all I'm all wild juiced. and free. Yeah, I'm all juiced. Um, I was, like, nervous about coming to a new space, so it got me all juiced. Yeah, same. Um, now but, I'm just oh, looking okay, at the back. Of Nelson. Nope, get out of here. Okay, nope. all right, uh, uh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I will say with the first two... The thing to remember, I think, about this, which is such an extraordinary thing, what I really appreciate about the first two books of Throne of Glass is that she was so incredibly young when she wrote these novels. It's like unbelievable. I'm glad she wasn't writing smut that young. I don't think she, I don't know if she had had sex at that point. And also, it's very cute because. I don't know if she knows how to write a sex scene at that age. And I kind of like don't want to read a, a sex scene by person, a 17 right? or 18 year old person. Uh, it's difficult um, to, for me to go back and read my slash fiction that I wrote in middle school and high school. I tell you, it, it teaches you a lot about what I thought was going to happen. And then he puts his mouth <laughs> on, on me, my <laughs> boob, <laughs> in it, all and around. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it felt weird. I guess I um, should go back and read those just to see what I thought sex was going to be. So I will say it's probably for the best that it's not the se- <laughs> The sex scenes are very much like, and then they went into the bedroom and then they were out and it was uh, good. Uh, very Twilight. Yes, very Twilight. And then they had the but, sex you were waiting for and then <laughs> next page. But not conservative reasons, just because, just because child she's young. reasons. And I, I'll take it. Yeah. You're right. I, I just need to switch. I need to get past the first two books and then it's, it's straight still, on to the morning. They're still very enjoyable. And I do, uh, I try to remember, I appreciate them for what they are, which is a very young person making an entire world up, which is unbelievable Her to me. Her world building is I just re- I remember the stories I wrote in high school. Oh, were, were you world building? No. <laughs> I was not. I tried. Natalie. Oh, I tried. It was very, it was a poor attempt. That's okay. Um, so At it's least incredible. you tried. And that's, and, and isn't that a beautiful thing? Well, I I did it out of anger and spite for him to be like, I don't want to look at any of you. I'm not taking swim class. I'm going to write my stories. Ooh. Fuck you. I did it more because no one would kiss me. So I did it. Well, was yeah, like, fine. No one... And I'm going to write them kissing me. You don't have to kiss me. I was not getting kissed very much either. So no. don't worry about it. What? The two of us that dress up every week and talk about smut, we didn't get kissed that much when we were younger? Here's what you're missing out on. What? Look okay. at how great we are. I'm hitting her wings because they're so big and beautiful. I bet you feel sorry now, boy. Missed out on this. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all see. They'll all see. We were the catches all along. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, after the beautiful Yule Miss night that they had, oh my God! Now I'm reading Throne of Glass. Not Yule Miss Solstice. Oh, Yule Miss is Throne of oh, Glass. Oh shit, dude! Uh, Solstice evening, where they had a 
lovemaking session that was very special. Oh, and yeah. what did she do at the end? She asked him to stay. She asked him to stay, stay with me. And so the next morning, Nesta awakens in Cassian's arms. Nice. Man, imagine how big and thick his arms are. Probably pretty big. Oh. They have a moony-eyed lay Would down. you ask him to keep on the siphons? I think I would. At least a couple of times. All of them? Just a couple. I mean, yeah, sure. I don't know about that time, but many times. Not I when would. they're like making love, probably not, but like making down dirty fuck. I think that I would keep them. I think, doesn't he mostly keep the hand siphons on all the time? I don't know. We should ask. <laughs> Sarah, you're all Sarah. Be her friend. <laughs> What are what are his siphons doing? Where does he put the siphons? Um, <laughs> so, oh my God, what if he? Never mind. Tell did no. I was just wondering what would happen if he <laughs> put it one inside her. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh my God, think of the power she would have, and then she's like, be, she's he's wearing her like a glove. <laughs> I imagine it has to be connected to him, right? Sarah, Sarah, what happens whenever it snow. goes inside something else? I mean, you've got the siphon bracelet on now. I still, I'm sorry. I keep wearing things that are jingle jangle. You're jingle jangle. Um, yeah, I do have the siphon bracelet on right yeah. now. Yeah. So they wake up together in the river house and they're just, you know, they wake up happy and warm and they're staring at each other and they immediately need to be together. Again. Yes. As they finish. Suddenly, Cassian has somewhere to be. Snowball fight. I'll be late. She's like, what? Oh, my God. How cute are they? And then she's all like, goosh, goosh. Oh, my God. They do this wholesome ass thing. Goosh, goosh, goosh. Well, at first, she's like, no idea what he's, he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. And I'd also be like, I just asked you to stay the night. And now you're going to go for a snowball fight? Uh, Yeah. So he says, don't worry about it. It's just a super important thing I must do every year. She laughs. And as I, and. Uh, is as incredulous as Pharaoh was about it when she learned of this tradition that they've done for hundreds of years. When he brings up the birchin, she gets a little more intrigued and he seems to have to fight himself to get out of the door as she gives him bedroom mm. eyes. He tells her that after he does the snowball fight, he's going to have to go to Illyria for a few days, but he'll be back after that. She's sort of confused about it, but I'm not. Mm, I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. It's got to be so annoying. I feel like this is probably akin to dating somebody that's got a PJ um, that they can just like get up and go whenever they want. A PJ? Private jet. I call them PJs because, like, I'm always on them. And, uh, like, so, like, it would be like dating me. Like, oh, you never know where I'm going to go. Like, if you wow. could just fly somewhere. Climate criminal over here, huh? Yeah. I'm the one single-handedly creating the climate crisis with my PJ. That's pretty baller of you, I Thank guess. Thank you. But I imagine it's similar because he can just fly off whenever he wants. He doesn't even have to buy a ticket. It's true. He's not creating uh, noxious gases. No, no, no. Just the only ones... <sighs> No, no, <laughs> no, we don't do fart jokes here. Ew, no, I was talking about it coming out of my pussy like my my pussy smell, like like my arousement. Oh, God. I'm sorry for my noxious gases. Wow. So wait, your arousal <laughs> smells are gonna noxious? Knock you out. Pussy gonna knock you out. <laughs> That's what the song's about. That's, I guess that, you know, that is a whole market of an audience that would be into that. Noxious so. gases, man. Yep. I just imagine it's like green, you know, and like comes out like it's like cartoon poison. Yes. Like who frame Roger Rabbit? Yeah, be scared of me. Three days go by and there's no Cassian. And, you know, Nesta's sort of wondering, but she's very busy because the Valkyries may not rest during this time. He'd been replaced in training by a stone-faced Azrael, who was more aloof than usual and wouldn't even give her a smile. Which, if you've read the bonus chapter, there is context for this. I thought that that was a fun choice to make, that without reading the bonus chapter, this could just be a dismissive character trait, that he's being extra grumpy. But there's a whole reason for there's it. There's, like, things going on inside of his head. Did you read it yet? Yes. Okay. Are we going to do we insert it at some point i think we were gonna maybe talk about the bonus chapters maybe we do a full episode on them okay you want to do that i think so because i think i mean we must 
we must discuss. But anyway, since Nesta's now bared everything to Cassian, she's proudly displaying her Symphonia at training and just blasting, I assume, some Mika or Scissor Sisters or some Robin. She's dancing on her own right now. I've been on a 2007 music kick. Can you tell? I like this. <clears throat> I, I, I think it's I think it's more fun. Yeah. Than what I've been listening to. Yeah, my, I, that's why I've listened. I wanted to be in like a happy mood, and those are like <sighs> you don't, don't want to start listening to my bleak music because I've been listening to a, a, a playlist I referred to as bleak but fun. I do love bleak music. I love being bleak. I love it, especially in a January. Januarys are made for bleak. Well, see, I have to go the opposite. I yeah, mean, I get it. it. Honestly, it's smarter to do the opposite rather than um, just smearing yourself in it. Smear yourself. What are you, a bagel? Oh, God, I wish. Don't even say the word bagel in front of me now. Oh, I'm hungry. Though everyone is having a good time with the music, Nesta is worried because of how desperate she feels for Cassian, that she needs to pleasure herself multiple times a day, even though he's only been gone for a few days. Or you could, like, save it all up and be like, oh, I can't touch myself while he's gone. I think she's saying her mania, her manic need is so rough. She's like, whoa. I gotta rub it out. I've got to rub it out. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, man. She thinks that maybe she's gone mad, that the feeling of her walls crumbling in her mind when she was with Cass last was actually her sanity crumbling. And now all of her thoughts are like little cartoon characters from, again, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Whoa. Yes, I brought up toys. Yes, it's in your brain right now. Maybe we have to watch it. I love that movie still so much. I've been wanting to rewatch it because we recently, I saw Cool World for the first time. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, really, all I could think of was like, man, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is just such a great movie. It's Ex really what I took from Exponentially cool World. better than Cool yes. World, I'm sorry to yeah. say. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Although, I mean, she's hot. Don't get me wrong. She's a hot cartoon. Yeah, I mean, I'd make out with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the issue here. No. Even the grueling training isn't enough to distract Nesta. She's realized she's going to need to try another method of distraction and does something new for her. Oh, you could get blackout drunk. Have you thought about that? She thinks about it a lot. I bet. But no, she wants she to do can't. something more wholesome. I don't think she can yet anyway. No, she'd have to go down the steps. Mm -hmm. But instead, she reaches out a hand Aww. to somebody else, asks her besties if they'd like to have a sleepover. But she calls it a read-in. Do you want to have a read-in, Natalie? Oh my God, next weekend, Jeff's out of town and we can sit and we can read Crescent City 3 while we sit next to each other. We could. We could. I mean, I would totally do it. We could read in. Both females seem to understand, all the, I'm her besties, but seem to understand why the sudden ask and try not to smile when they accept the invitation because they can tell she's all hard up and she needs something to think about. And she probably has never, I mean, not probably, she has never had a bestie sleepover before. I'm sure she has not. I mean, she probably had enough sleepovers what with, with her sharing beds with <laughs> her sisters. But, you know, this is like nice because then you don't have to share beds. You've got a whole, you've got a whole yeah. house. When sleepovers are trauma, it's not usually something you do for fun. But now she's healing. Oh, my God. Like that Pen15 episode of the girls sleepover. It like oh, yeah. it brought back traumas. That's a great of, show. It's, Pen15 is an amazing show. Specifically, the episode of the sleepover. It makes you remember how much trauma we experience at sleepovers. I can't be the only one that was traumatized by sleepovers as a kid. No, I had a lot of good memories from sleepovers, but definitely not. All of the memories are good. I just feel like it's also like the idea of like, I think my anxiety, a lot of my anxiety stems from just like remembering like, I can't fall asleep when I'm not in my bed. I can't fall asleep. I can't oh, really? fall asleep here. And so I would just be up all night long, just like 12 years old, terrified in a house that wasn't mine. So it wasn't even necessarily like, oh, your friends were like taunting you. It was just like the idea of it was terrifying to me. I get that. I think a lot of people experience that. Um, I didn't have any connection to my bedroom so i just didn't Sounds care good. yeah isn't it good yeah um, yes we're so, traumatized in different ways yeah and isn't it beautiful? we can find the common ground common ground thank you so both uh, both of the besties are totally on board for this and this is a big deal for gwen who hasn't done something so casual away from the library for years i'm also kind of surprised that they let her stay the night somewhere else well she does say she has to ask clotho yes yeah yeah, yeah. and clotho's definitely trying to help nesta so i'm i believe you know it makes sense it does make sense i just like i feel like you know I, I, 
They could have been bitches about it, is what I'm mm, saying. They could have been. I mean, if she had to ask Meryl. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have been a little thing, yeah. Later that night, Emery and Nesta are waiting for Gwen to arrive in their private House of Wind library, which, by the way, the house has helped set up for their night by adding beds and furniture and things. <gasps> Thank you, house. Thank you, house. And Emery does what one does at a sleepover. Gossips. Yeah. She not so subtly asks Nesta if Cassian is good at sex. Uh-huh. Since she is so overwhelmed with her feelings right now. Uh-huh. You think he's bad at it, girl? And as Cassian had pointed out during that solstice event, Nesta may never be the giggling type of gal, but she tells Emery, um, yes, yes, holy shit, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm jelly. My mind can't stop returning to how he looks when he's on top of me. I can't think of anything else, et cetera. But she says all that by just kind of clearing her throat. <laughs> I don't think I could do this without gossiping about it. I'm so not... The person that, like, plays the cool hand. Like, if I'm getting plowed that well, I'm just like, yeah, 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 look at me. But maybe that's just because I'm a hashtag Leo. I don't know what Nesta is. I, I think her birthday is in the spring, but we don't know the exact time. Ooh, what do you think? Maybe she's an Aries like me. Oh, my God. I could see her being an Aries. It's, yeah, I could see that. an intense person. Um, I could see that. I could not. But Emery gets Nesta, so she gets this reaction, and she's like, hell yeah. And she jokes with her that he, she can kind of tell because he's got the walk of someone who can please a woman. <laughs> BDE, if you will. <laughs> Before they can go further, they hear a knock, and Gwen appears into the room. She's a bit nervous, understandably, but seems to lose that feeling once she sees that the house has provided supplies. The house had stocked the table between the armchairs with piles of chocolate, truffles and confections and bars of it, along with cookies and small finger cakes and a platter of cheeses and fruit and crafts of water and various juices. Oh, it sounds like they're all going to go out tripping. Like, I feel like this is like the split, like the display and buffet, display and buffet of people that are like, all right, we're going to all take a full tab of acid. We (laughs) need to make sure that we've got our many different, always many different drinks, many different like mouth feels, things that that are are good for you. So I guess it wouldn't be chocolate. It would be more the cheeses and fruits. Mm. That's because we're both monsters. They're doing this wholesomely. They're doing it. Because they're wholesome. Where's the wine? I, I know. know we can't, Nesta. I know we can't because of Nesta. I'm saying if you threw some white wine into this, I'm never leaving I'll that room there. again. I'll be there. Here it's revealed to Oh, Emer- my God. You said that in the notes. Throw in some white wine. I'm never leaving that room again. I sure did. And I meant it. Yes. Here it's revealed to Emery and Gwen that the house dotes on Nesta and brings her things. This is, of course, delightful and shocking to them, and Nesta informs them that she and the house have bonded over the love of books. Within moments, both of Nesta's friends are asking the house for things. Cut two hours later, and we find a new Nesta, one who is being silly. Is she being a silly tin? Who'd have ever thunk it? This is cute. Nesta Archer on acting a fool. I mean, sometimes you got to get together with your bitches and act a fool, man. Mm -hmm. That's what our theme gals are for. Mm -hmm. They're all sitting in bathtubs filled with bubbles. Each one of their requests had gotten more and more absurd, and Nesta might have felt like they were exploiting the house had it not been so exuberant in answering their commands, adding creative flourishes, like the fact that each bubble held a tiny bird fluttering about inside. That would annoy the hell out of me. What? There'd be a bunch of birds. <laughs> I don't want a bunch of birds. Just cheep, cheep, cheep. I'm like, I'm trying to talk to my bitches. Maybe they're just like Silent images. Birds. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that are just like fluttering through that the, the <laughs> room. <laughs> ah, get out of here. Get out of here. Ah, ah. We're just trying to take a bath. <laughs> It would be funny, though. It would be funny. I also must mention that beyond the silent fireworks going off in the room, there's a miniature Pegasus eating grass by the bookshelves. A miniature Pegasus, you say? Oh, interesting. Interesting. I won't say anything else. It's probably no surprise, as someone, myself, who identifies as a V-saw, a very silly adult woman. Well, you are, yes. That I found this scene very touching. 
While still more reserved than how maybe Emery and Gwen are acting, she's showing her subtle sign of joy and laughter, and that is very moving to me. Let your hair down. It's vulnerable to be a silly person when it you're is. an adult because they it tries to get they try to beat it out of you because they don't want adults to feel joy or happiness. That and if you do, you should feel shame for it. Like right. I feel like with all of your relaxation, all of your smiling, there should always be a level of shame, and I think that that is also taught specifically to like people born as women, people that have lived a life as a woman, I mm -hmm. think that, like, that immediately is put on you that you're not, that, like, this is a really s silly thing to say. Jeff asked me the other day, he was like, I love sandwiches, and he's like, and I feel like on the whole that, like, it's always, like, a male, like, it's, like, a gendered thing that, like, men love sandwiches, and women don't love sandwiches as much, and I did pause it. There's like, is it possibly because we've been told our entire lives not to eat carbs and that everything on a sandwich is what we're not supposed to enjoy, yeah. that possibly it's a reason why people that have lived a life as a woman that are like kind of don't even think about sandwiches as a viable option. And I love sandwiches, but yeah. I never like think to like make sandwiches for dinner or like no. I never, it's never my first choice when I'm going out with my bitches for lunch to like go get like a, a hoagie. <laughs> oh, and maybe I am positing too far. No, I but... I think that's incredibly um true and relevant. And, and and there's I have no like proof of this. This is this is just a concept that I made up. But I feel like it's the, those kind of things and ways. It was I was also after we watched we rewatched the Barbie movie, of course. Mm. Um, so it may that may have. Ha, huh. God, I can't I can't believe why that came up. Thanks, Greta Gerwig. Thanks, Greta Gerwig. You know you're thin. not going to get an Oscar. Not going to get an Oscar. <laughs> um, but I'm going to, okay, I'm going to throw this out here. My, what I will say about that is, first off, Ryan Gosling did do an incredible job in that movie. And yes. he had to sing and dance and do all this shit. And, and also his, like, reply afterwards was really stellar, by the way. Of him being oh, like, there is no Ken without Barbie. Like, I appreciate the Academy. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But, like, it's really essentially, like, fuck you guys for not doing what you should have done. Okay, devil's advocate. I do think Greta Gerwig should have been nominated for stuff. Um, I think Margot Robbie was incredible. But she was embodying the archetypal character that is supposed to be, like, kind of not doing that much. And then the the... The Ken is playing the woman's part who's like holding the whole movie up and it's sort of like the reversal of that. And so it kind of makes sense because he had to do so much more in that movie. And it's not because yes. Margot Robbie sucked in it. I thought she was wonderful, but her character doesn't do as much. But Greta Gerwig should have been on Well, that. yeah, of course. And that's not a hate on she Margot Robbie. She single-handedly saved the movie theaters. Haven't you heard? She did. That's the word on the street. <laughs> Um, yes, that I, and Nicole Kidman, much. obviously. Well, yeah, and her. I mean, her thanking us every time we go to the movie theater. I'm like, thank you, and thank you, and thank me. Oh, anyway, sandwiches, sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Please, back to the sandwiches that aren't in the scene in the book. Um, but you're right. I, I mean, this is all connected to that same. I, I, it's, it's hard to watch women not. They're not supposed to have fun. As adults, and um, I'm anti that. I oppose it. Dude, we have a lot of fun. We do. <laughs> <laughs> it really is like sometimes I just feel like instead of like, man, we really like we talk about like filling up our dance card every week, and we fill up our dance card every week, and we we're we're out, we're doing things all the time, and very you know, lucky. I do feel very lucky for that, and I'm happy for Nesta. I'm happy for Nesta. As the ladies sit in their tubs, bedecked in wild outfits brought by the house. I can't believe you've never asked to take a bath right next to me in the same room. It's like <laughs> no, we're not no, even no. sisters-in-law. No. Where are we even going to go where there's two baths sitting next to each other? We're going to have to get, we're going to have to portal one in, Natalie. I don't know. Bitches find a way. I, I do enjoy a, a Korean spa, uh, which is very prevalent in Los Angeles culture. And I do. But I go by myself, or I ha I used to. I haven't gone in a long time, but I don't know if I could do it with friends. I don't know why. You don't want to be nude with me. I mean, is that why what you want? Why do you want to be nude with me? No, I will never be nude in front of you. <laughs> but uh, I I want to talk the talk. I talk about talking the talk and not walking the walk. I am very nervous. I would be very nervous about being nude in front of other people. And so that's why the case spas actually scare me. It's actually very, very relaxed in the ones that I've gone to. But I do like going by myself. And not interacting with people. And most people do. Some people go with their friends or their like their spouses or whatever. But I just enjoy 
being there alone. Yeah, just chilling out, man. Yeah. Maxing out. But they're not nude in these tubs. They're wearing oh, wild outfits. Yeah. Gwen ponders like on Mariah Carey in the hot tub. Yes. Gwen ponders on whether she'll ever be ready to leave the mountain, and they, the other two see her gazing out the window. Nesta realizes that she, too, isn't sure about how she feels. While far less time spent away from society for Nesta, she really hasn't addressed what the game plan is going to be to reintegrate herself back with the others. So, like, she's in this space that's sort of like a, a surreality She's she's like living in an ideal situation for her. And so she is healing, but she doesn't know how that's going to go when she goes back into the world. And I think there's a lot of people who can kind of understand that feeling. Oh, completely. The, you know, we all have spaces that we feel safe within, especially safe to feel vulnerable, safe to be ourselves. And then when you get outside of that space to you know, when you're interacting with, you know, the evils of the world again, it's hard to just seamlessly transition right back in. It is. And so she's also sitting there next to Gwen and also going, oh, yeah, I should probably also consider what the fuck I'm going to do after this. But Gwen quickly changes the subject by jumping up and retrieving the bag she arrived with. She has brought an activity <laughs> because she didn't realize they'd have a whole magic house to entertain them. This friendship bracelet thing really brought me back to sleep over time. Oh, did it really you make did. friendship bracelets? For sure. My mom was actually really good at throwing little kid parties and she'd always have crafts and activities like this for everybody to do. And it really like took me to my childhood. That's cute. Yeah, it's very cute. Gwen brings out the threads and explains, sadly, that this was a pastime between her and her sister and that they'd attach little coins to them, which would signify wishes. The wishes were supposed to come true and the bracelet eventually fell off. Do you want one? I'll make you one. Do but you then you're going to have to dedicate. You cannot cut the, the bracelet off. Well, yeah, that's what they technically. Did you ever do that when you were? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it would get all ratty and disgusting because, like, I just remember, like, because you wear it in the shower, you wear it in the yeah. pool. It's oh, and it would, I, and it would, I wear it until it frayed off. Oh, yeah, definitely. Would you wear it until it fell off your body, Natalie? I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I guess I'd have, to, I'd have to make it, like, black. Yeah, I mean, I would, like, hope it was certain colors, but I would just think it was nice if you did it and you were like, you have to wear it. I'd be like, okay, fine. fine. Chill out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get in the bath with me, Natalie. <laughs> Put on your bathing suit or get into the bath. <laughs> Thank you for letting me wear bathing suit. You can wear a bathing suit. Right? Yeah, I, like I said, I'm not going to lie and pretend like I want to be nude in front of you. I don't. <laughs> I know that it will make us closer, but, like, I do we need that, to be I, that close? I don't think we need to be that close. I, don't, I think we're pretty close. I actually don't even think that makes people necessarily closer. You want? I'll take it <laughs> no. off. No. I'll take it off. <laughs> but I did. Did you ever do that when you were younger? Did you wear one until it fell off? Like, I, and then the wish would come true? Pretty sure. I know that I had a couple different ankle lits. Yes. Um, I remember that. I'm sure I had bracelets. I've got too. the embroidery floss for it. Why are why haven't we made them? All right, let's get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta make each other a bracelet. It's usually because when we get together, we're not doing activities. We're just like screaming and laughing. Screaming and laughing um, and drinking wine. Yeah, drinking wine. Oh yes, drinking wine. <laughs> so also, this is also so this is a thing that is as we've just been discussing something that happens Earthside. From what I could find, it's generally accepted that the concept of friendship bracelets came from traditions in like old South America that found its way to the U.S. in the 70s and 80s. Huh. And while it derived from more serious practices like the protesting and symbolism for like religious persecution, it eventually became just a bonding activity for kids. The coins, as far as I can tell, come from a more of the – there's the Chinese bracelet tradition that I'm sure you've seen before mm. where it's like the, the coins like woven into yes. it. Yes. I think that's where she's getting that reference from. Hell yeah. Because those are like luck coins. So for Gwen, revealing this memory about her sister is very personal and it shows how much she trusts these other females. And here she finally opens up a bit about her twin. Her name was Katrin and she had very different features as they were fraternal. While Gwen has red hair and freckles, Katrin was raven haired and pale. She laughed quietly. Despite all of her faults and mine, we loved each other dearly. We were all each other had while growing up. She was the only one I could truly rely on, and I miss her every day. Nesta couldn't stop herself from thinking of Feyre. And that's 
very it's a reveal of sorts that she misses her that nesta has some part of her that longs for her sister maybe even misses her but also like pharaoh was the only one that she could rely on very yeah, much so you know, like, like i would say above and beyond rely i do wonder though is this like the first time she's realized it it might be you know because again a lot of times when you kind of clear up some of the dark stuff in you all of these other things come in how you have affected a lot of your relationships what you've done the choices you've made it all comes into yeah. play and you start thinking about and specifically you start thinking about your relationships and what your relationships were and are built on exactly and maybe some of the resentment she felt for Feyre she's now realizing I was misplacing my feelings onto her and I'm sorry about it um and you know maybe she even appreciated the little bit of companionship they were able to find even throughout all that trauma so those little moments we saw them bonding when she like taught her to paint briefly right before right they were left and like they had those moments and it probably Nessa's realizing that actually was important to her and in fact Gwen tearfully reflects on how she sees her and her twins' relationship so differently now that she's gone, that their squabbles and differences didn't actually matter. And all she wants to do is to be able to tell her how much she loves her. Stop! It's always the way, you know? I can't imagine it. No, it's It hard. hurts my chest. Yeah, yeah. Nesta contemplates this and wonders if perhaps all sisters go through having these sorts of trials. Maybe the answer not, is yes. <laughs> maybe not as extreme as the Archeron sisters. I know you did like go under a mountain for just Yeah, a while, and I like died and came back again and I was like, give me your drips so that I can be a fan. You know, I, I did all the drips. Thing. <laughs> yeah, man. They dripped into my skin, man. And then my sister's like, I love you. I love you. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, that's not what happened. Mm, I'm not human. exactly. It's slightly different than mm. what happened. But, you know, it's I would imagine... Having a sister comes with both rewards and tribulations. And and especially with twins, like I, I watched this, I watched a documentary that was talking about twins. And I also watched a reality show called Twin Love yeah. that I guess I have brought up. Are you, watching, but, the, are you watching the twin one where they're getting fed different diets? It is upsetting. Yeah. I... Uh, you are what you eat is what it's called. And they and they are doing uh, they're doing research on identical twins because their DNA makeup is so similar. So they give each one a healthy omnivore diet and one a healthy vegan diet. And then it, it explains more about nutrition from there. But um, just thinking about the idea that like, you know, I, I don't even think about the fact that like your DNA is the same. So when you're not together, like how do you exist? How do you not? How do you have one without the other? I don't know. I I I think that some tw there's twins who've talked about losing their twin and like how devastating and like it, it is. It, you lose it's, a part of you. It's also really interesting because it seems like twins don't often and twins, please write in. Honestly, let us. I, I'm so I'm so fascinated by twins. So my I, I always wanted one so bad yeah. when I was a kid. And it seems like some are deeply interconnected and then there are some who are do mortal not. enemies. Yes. Like do not speak, do not like each other, do not spend time together. But I've never met anyone in between. Like right. I feel like I've only, kn but I've known one, like multiples of both of those people. Right. But maybe that's just media tricking us and there's going to be a bunch Could of be. twins being like, shut up. We're just normal. We're just uh, normal siblings. Yeah. But I, there is. A, yeah, maybe we're putting them up on a pedestal and we shouldn't be doing that. But it's because I always wanted to have a I twin. Know, I think it's cool. But they are they do experience life differently starting from the womb. Yes. And so there is a difference there. And and so, yeah, like losing your twin would probably be like devastating beyond words. Yes. Um. So this is, you know, of course, a big thing for for Gwen to share to the others. And Nesta sort of reflecting on this and thinking about like. You know, maybe I I can sort of start over with Favor. They have immortals' lives to live, and maybe we can just kind of begin again. And as Nesta thinks on these things, they sit down and they choose each other's colors for their bracelets: green, purple, and gold for Emery. Very Mardi Gras. Yes. Navy blue, crimson, and silver for Nesta, and blue, white, and teal for Gwen. None of these are my favorite color combos. No, they're they're interesting choices. I get why the colors for Gwen, since she has the turquoise eyes. Yeah. And she has the water blood. Water creature. Water, yeah, water blood. Silver for Nesta makes sense, too, because of the silver eyeballs. Yes. I'm um, not sure about Emery, though. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe she just likes it. 
Maybe she just likes some color. Maybe just like goes with her ribs. She loves dancing in parades. Right? Uh, look at these. Uh, by the way, I just plugged this picture into the script because this is the cutest image of this scene I've ever seen. It's by somebody called Frostbite Studios, and I'm obsessed with their drawing style now. And look how I this is so They're close so to how cute. I imagine them in yes. my brain. Um, I love this image. So if you ever want to look that up, you can find the, this. I'm sure you can Google their names plus Frostbite Studios. Also, Ian will probably pop it up behind us. Um, <laughs> yay! Gwen shows them how to weave the bracelets and add the little coins to them. Nesta's not great at it, but they've all enjoyed themselves listening to the symphonia and chatting away. And I'm happy for them. As they reach the middle of the bracelet process, Gwen picks up the wish coins, but Nesta stops her mm. and requests that she make the wish for all of them. As she surveys the two, she thinks about how these two females have become like her sisters. Sisters from two other misters. A chosen family, like the one Feyre had found for herself. Nesta squeezed the charms in her palm, closing her eyes, and said, I wish for us to have the courage to go out into the world when we are ready, but to always be able to find our way back to each other, no matter what. Gwyn and Emery cheered at that, and when Nesta opened her eyes, palm unfurling, she could have sworn the coins glowed faintly. Ooh, magic. magic. She powerful. Magics. At chapter 60, we're back with Cassian, and he's revealing why he's actually been gone, which is we as the reader probably guessed, but Nesta isn't fully aware. Well, she was busy having gal pal time. Well, she's also in denial about something. True. That he, you know, we know he wouldn't have been able to control himself around Nesta for a minute. Maybe something like, well, what we saw went through. Mm. At the start of the chapter, he's returned to the fighting ring and he's realizing that not only did a massive change happen at the river house between he and Nesta, Solstice Night, but there has been some sort of paradigm shift within the three females. He notices now that they are also wearing these colorful bracelets they weren't wearing before as the trio stands in front of the ribbon. The ribbon. The ribbon. <laughs> Asriel is nearby, and he, it's, he's encouraging them, and it's clear they're trying to make today the day they slice that damned ribbon. You get it, man. Emmer and then with the power of their bracelets combined, I, I think that they can do it this time. I think so, too. Emery softly makes a joke about the miniature Pegasus, and Cassian is shook to hear Nesta having free laughter come out of her mouth. Not a scoff, but a chortle. Oh, my goodness. As Cass is about to come in his pants. Oh, yeah. Oh, I get it. The sound of laughter makes I mean, everybody goosh. Especially somebody that like you're already attracted to and oh, yeah. you want to see them happy. And he's just like, oh, she's uh, happy. She's getting happier. Maybe I'm a part of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but as that's all about to happen, Gwen focuses quietly on the ribbon flowing in the wind and they all turn their attention to it. Gwen whispered. I am the rock against which the surf crashes. Nesta straightened at the words, as if they were a prayer and a summons. Gwyn lifted the blade. Nothing can break me. Pretty badass. When Emery changes that phrase to nothing can break us, Cassian feels the ground shift under his very feet. Sick! Something about that moment sang, begged to be written in history with reverence. Asriel pauses as well, feeling, feeling the air buzzing. Gwen, her body in perfect harmony with the wind, spins and executes a backhand slice. Half the ribbon fluttered to the red stone. Oh shit, she did it. Nesta bent down, picked up the fallen half of the ribbon, and solemnly tied it around Gwen's brow. Gwen lifted trembling fingers to her brow, touching the ribbon with which Nesta had crowned her. Nesta's voice was thick as she declared, Valkyrie. Yeah! Yeah! Later that day, both Nesta and Emery had cut the ribbon. <gasps> Them some Valkyries. Yes! Also, why'd you have white ribbon? What do you do with your white ribbons? Do you make, do you have flutterabouts? I just have craft stuff everywhere. Yeah. Because I make, 
costumey things and stuff. I don't know. Just I had other everywhere. ribbons. I just didn't literally have white. I was like, I guess what would I have used a white ribbon for? I had, I had one connected to like a pouch. Uh, I like, yeah, just yeah. took it off of something Hell else. Hell yeah. I should have brought you one. <gasps> yeah, I'm still stewing over here. <laughs> How dare you not read my mind? I actually didn't know what you were wearing. Today. Yeah, I mean, we don't talk about it. We just kind of show up. Yeah. We're with Nesta's thoughts that afternoon, and she is consumed with both reverence and pride for her accomplishment and insatiable, unending lust for Cassian. Yeah! But he keeps disappearing before she can pounce upon him, even that night. But the next morning, she understood why. The ring had become boot camp slash ninja warrior. Ugh. This is important because... That means that the two Illyrians feel that the priestesses Nesta and Emery are ready to attempt this trial. Uh -oh. Cassian explains to the gathered participants that this course requires teamwork, and teamwork was what made the Valkyrie unit so strong. Valkyrie. In order for them to get through these challenges, they would need to work in groups of three. Gwen, for one, is up for the challenge and tells the boys, No problemo, chumps. We got this. Yeah, they do. Cut to later and they do not got this. No, 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 no. But, you know, they've got the spirit and that is half the battle. Yeah. So they, these Illyrian men, males, finally decide these, okay, they are, pro we have faith that these priestesses and these females are ready to take this new part of the challenge. And it is brutal. None of the groups have made it by the end of that day. In fact, Gwenestery, <laughs> Ooh, I, started using I like it. it. Started to use shorthand. Only made it to the middle. And it's serious business. There's blood and bruises galore. As they grumble, Gwen struts past Az and says, See you tomorrow, Shadow Singer. Az stared after her, brows high with amusement. When he turned back, Nesta grinned. You have no idea what you just started, she said, as angled his head, hazel eyes narrowing as Gwyn reached the archway. Again, all I can think of is bonus chapter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, if you haven't read the bonus chapter yet, you should. Yeah, you should, especially because we'll probably do an episode on just the bonus chapters when we're done. So, yeah. Again, that's a little bit, uh, you could like connect that to something or you could not which i think is it's well it's up to you so if you didn't read the chapter you'd just be like okay well yeah because i didn't read it before i read this book so it, yeah it, you know i just it adds I, a little just, bit it does it does yeah yeah so we cut to a brief oh my god i can't believe we're, we're going to talk about crescent city i was about to say and i was like jackie this isn't the time in the space it's not the time in space jackie <sighs> i'm just working on my theories <laughs> to see you in your lab laboratory. I just, I literally alone yesterday was just like looking through the book, just silently like putting together, just, I had fun. I had fun with my reading. Why are you, you have beakers? What is, what is the yeah, liquid? Yeah, I is, wish. Me, 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 me. We cut to a brief montage of the next couple weeks in which all of the ladies repeatedly attempt to beat this devil course. No one beats it. All right, we're not at the rocky part yet. Mm -mm. They're going through it, though. They keep trying. They keep failing. But they're, they're going again, and that's not failing if you get up. You're right. And every night, Cass and Az change the course around. There are both mental and physical feats to complete, and they only get an hour a day to do so. Just imagine one of them is just like Sudoku, and she's like, oh, where does a nine go? Oh, I made my notes. Can you do group Sudoku? I would love to. See, I just think of this as like an escape room. That's where my mind oh, goes Oh, yeah, that, that makes more sense than Sudoku, because Sudoku is a it's a solitary game. Where's the key? <laughs> It oh, says man. to look above the sun to the right. Where's, so, I don't see a sun in here. I'm so bad at those. Games. I love I'm, escape rooms. I love them, but I'm so bad at them. I'm like, I don't know what it means. Where's the thing? How do we get out of the room? You have other, have other strengths. I have other strengths. <laughs> the, rest, the rest of the morning after that hour each day is spent learning how to move as a unit, how to use their shields and weapons in battle formations, and it's all grueling. But they kept going. Through sweat and breath and blood, they forged themselves together. They're creating a whole unit of an army. Ugh. 
In the evenings, Gwenestri would study strategy and go over Valkyrie history. Through that time, many more of the priestesses cut the ribbon, and every night Nesta ran those blasted stairs. Man, she must be able to decapitate a man with those thighs. Can you imagine how tight her legs are? She she might want to add some like yoga into this. Like, is she stretching enough? I, I'm I hope sure. she's stretching. Imagine how tight. I had a Charlie horse in my foot last night, and I thought I was about to die. <laughs> I just imagine, though, imagine her inner thigh strength from all of that work. Damn. But, like, just think of how it would throb. I guess eventually it would stop throbbing. That's what you'd hope for. Never stops, really. When you're, like, pushing yourself, you never not, you never stop getting sore. Yes. Eventually, you know, whatever. I, I just have grown in my life to enjoy feeling sore. Yeah, because it means you did something. I think that's not a sickness. I don't <laughs> know. I won't tell any doctors if you won't. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Two months. It takes two months for the trio to finish that course. The only ones to do so, so far. When they finish it, instead of a prize or celebration, Asriel says, actually, guess what? Surprise! You've just quali- <laughs> Supplies! <laughs> You've just qualified for the blood rite. <gasps> but also, what... Could it, they have a, a pizza party or something? Something. I think that there's some way, like book it, you know, like give oh, them a free pre- something. A personal you know? pan. Yeah, they've been reading all those books. Give them something. No, they just get a, a one way ticket into a, a horrible week of being almost murdered. Oh, good. Something with Gwen clicks in that moment. Wait a second. They realized this morning that the other priestesses had been called away. So it was the only the three of them finishing the course. They thought something Clotho, like maybe Clotho requested the priestesses be somewhere. But what really happened was that the two Illyrians, Cass and Az, had a feeling today would be the day that this trio reached the finish line. And because he needed Lord Devlin to bear witness, he sent the other priestesses away so they wouldn't be subjected to his sneering. They're just always thinking about other people. So and thoughtful. It, it is just like it makes me quake with with ecstasy and, ecstasy. and lust. Ecstasy. My yeah. loins are just like I, I, it's like I got a I don't know bees down there. <laughs> Ouch! It would hurt. Yes, but oh, think of the thriving and the humming and the buzzing. You're going to catch a lot of flies oh, with that honey. Oh, I am. Oh, I am, babies. <laughs> but also, I wish I would get paid $1,000 per bee sting like uh, Candyman did. Oh, like in Candyman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, good for him. I mean, he had to have all those bees inside of his mouth. So he got paid an extra $1,000 yeah. per bee sting. Such a good still. 22 He made $22,000, in case you were wondering. Tony Todd. It's a man. He's a man. So they're... Busy being very attractive and thoughtful. Oh, God, I quake. <sighs> but then we also have Lord Devlin there who's just like, Ugh, I'm a bitch. Ugh, I'm I don't a bitch. like it. Yes. But Emery is like, hang on. So you didn't tell us any of this, but we don't have to do the blood right now, right? Cassian reassures her that they don't have to unless they want to. But they wanted to prove to Devlin that they were strong enough to do it. I will say when I first read this, I was a little like, uh, not fair that you didn't tell them that you decided for them that they shouldn't know. But then in rereading it, I'm like, he knew they they knew that like it would have just been more pressure that they didn't need. Yeah. So like I definitely have retracted some of those feelings. I think it's because I've become so in love with these characters that I give them the benefit of the doubt now. Also, it would have been different if then when they completed it, they were like, now you're going to the blood, right? Now, Bye. Yeah, right. Without any choice, without your consent. Yeah. So, and ultimately, it's not a difference either way. So I, like, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, even though this was a completion of the blood, right? It's not changing their life anyway. Right. But um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I get what you're saying, too, about not knowing. But yeah, it's like, give me the choice of whether I don't want to know. Like, say, like, he's coming at some point. Do you want to know or do you not want to know? Right. But sorry, I'm getting into semantics. It doesn't matter. I just was (laughs) saying what I thought the first time I read it. But Cassian, of course, says he just wanted to he wanted to prove to Devlin that these that these females could do anything you can do. I can can do do better. better. Emery, of course, would be more familiar with the blood rite, and so she's very fearful of that, and thankfully, she, you know, he reassures her. But as Cass says, Devlin should know girls rule and boys drool. The fine, the thing is, all right, you're right, girls rule, boys drool. But what 
how horrific these Illyrian men are to each other when in these battles, I don't think, would you do the blood right? Let's say you got through your Valkyrie. Would you do the blood right? Um, probably not. Because I don't trust the men. It's not that I can't do it. I don't trust what they're going to do to me. Which is brought up towards the end of the book. Right. Like there, there's a, another sort of risk for perhaps women going into that space that most men would yeah. not have to worry about. Yeah. And uh, especially what, what happens at the beginning of part four, which we'll get into in our episode. Um, fuck those guys, man. Ooh, I'm already mad about it. I'm already mad. So, but I think that you'd be able to, I think you could do the blood right, Natalie. Thank you. I think you're the only person I know IRL that could do it. Oh my God. Okay, stop. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> All right, I'll take my clothes off. <laughs> so, because I'm going to do it nude is what I meant. That sounds like a bad idea. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you're just doing the show Naked and Afraid, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, it's hard enough to just watch that show. Mm -hmm. It's the bugs that get you. I always, it's what I tell everybody. It's always the bugs. I tell them, look, I know how to survive in the woods, okay? And what you need to do is not worry about snakes and bears. It's always the groups of bugs that bugs. get the people knocked out of the show. It's the bugs. You got to cover yourself in mud. Mm -hmm. Just like when the predator's coming after you. Just the same. Cassian is clearly overjoyed that they succeeded and is so proud of them and tells them that they did as much as any Illyrian warrior save the blood right and that they are worthy for it if they chose. But Nesta says, with all due respect, I'd rather just be a Valkyrie, okay? Oh, snap, bitch! Chapter 61 begins with triumph. <laughs> it's like my hype, man. Is that too much? Yeah, was that, was no, that too much? I all just right. love the hype. <laughs> Chapter 61 begins with triumph. Nesta's blood sings with her accomplishments, her healing, her connections to those around her. I love this chapter. It's yes. very touching. She still has so much to learn and do, and, and she's happy for it, which is, the, you know, the best sign of feeling is going, I'm excited to face whatever things are coming yes. up for me. Those stairs, the more training, and in between a whole lot of Cassian. She woke up each morning glad to be there, to throw herself against the world and see what it did. She had music each night, and she had music in her heart. A song made up of Cassian's voice, of Gwyn and Emery's laughter, of her own breathing as she went down and down and down the stairs. Oh, I do love this chapter. And it should serve as a reminder that no matter how far you feel you've fallen, don't throw it in. You, you'd be missing out on some unbelievable shit if you give up. More joy and wonder than you ever thought possible, probably. So just don't give up on yourself Stop. ever. Stop. You're going to make me cry. Oh, I, when I was writing this script, I was tearing up because I was also listening to uplifting like orchestral music. And oh. I was like, oh. But it's true. Just I know just in the darkest pits, it feels so impossible. But you would miss out on so much that's so worth it to me. Like I that's how I feel, at least. Because it's hard to get through life sometimes. Yeah, man. It's And it's hard to see the hope when you're in the darkness as yeah. well. And just knowing that if you just keep swimming. Oh, no. Not you gotta the Disney just movie. Swimming. Yeah, I said it. Finding Nemo. I brought Finding Nemo into this. Sometimes you just got to yeah. keep swimming. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm wholesome. I don't know if you know this about me, but like I never talk about sex and I'm always thinking about Disney. The most wholesome of all things. <laughs> Um, I don't. I'm not a Disney adult, but I don't judge the Disney adults. I can't. I'm a theme park adult. I'm not any better. No, I, I get. I'm. I'm. A, I'm a coaster head. <laughs> That's what I refer to myself as. She always wears a coaster on her. Head. Oh, it's so heavy. How do I walk? Yep. On a day during this time, a very special day, as Nesta takes the stairs, she realizes that she might even like herself, and as she has that thought. The stairs vanished, and then there was only a door before her. She's done it. She's gotten to the bottom of the stairs, and not just out of rage. And just like every great journey to self, there's a door you can walk through. She opens this one and notes that all of the city's lights have been dimmed, which can only mean one thing. Starfall. Starfall, boom, it's a starfall, boom. <laughs> Love Starfall. I just want to dress like it's Starfall all the time. And I've been sort of starting to do that anyway. This 
show has really changed my fashion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it is, I realize, I, I feel like I'm worried that I'm cosplaying every day, and that's kind of scary, but, like, Ooh. fairy core you know, is so in. Also, my, my 2024 is wear whatever you want. I thought about putting on my ears to go to a party. I thought about it. I mean, we have a very close friend who does, does wear ears do that. all the and time. And it, it encourages me to kind of want to do the same thing. But then you're making a choice. You make a choice with your life. You and make maybe, a lot worse choices. You're right. He's, have fun. Have fun with your fashion. Who's it going to hurt? Doesn't matter. Let them judge. There's atrocities happening. Just wear a cut outfit you like. You're right. <laughs> have a smile. Have a smile. And you know who starts those atrocities? Boring ass men who wear stupid Boring. outfits. Boring. And they're mean during the blood rite. We're not there yet. I was talking about in real world, but also. I know all of them. I agree. Not also, you, blood Ryan. rite. I like you, though. Not Ryan. Ryan's not cool. all. Not all. She thinks about how she is free to venture to the city, but only looks up above her at the stairs, at the friends and the male who wait for her. She realizes she doesn't want to run from herself anymore. She faced the city, the lovely, vibrant city. None of it seemed as vibrant as what waited above. The climb would be brutal and almost without end, but at the top, Cassian would be waiting, as he had waited for her for years now. Nesta smiled and began the climb. Oh, <laughs> love it for her. I think also, by the way, brutal is an understatement uh, because uh, 20,000 steps. Yeah. That's 20,000 steps. Oh, yeah. I, I did watch a TikToker. A TikToker did the 20,000 steps. Ooh, tic- did Whoa. the Nesta challenge. 20,000? How, how did long it. did it take? I think at, I think many out like she did it on a, a stair, day? on a stairmaster. I don't know how long it took, but like she showed that like it was like a uh, a montage of her doing the twenty thousand step challenge on a stairmaster, and uh, I was just like, I can't imagine the quake. Because what did you make it up? You made it up what is like four thousand? No. Oh, what like four hundred. Oh yeah 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 twenty thousand. I she did it. You have to train for that. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think even afterwards, you would still have to be like in the hospital. Right? I know it a lot of people. It must have been over days, I guess. It must have been over days. I, I, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'm just like, how know. many steps can now a I gotta find, if climb? you find, send me the TikTok. If you know the one I'm talking about, send it to me. So I can show it to you. Jesus H. Um, so we cut to just another perfect cinematic moment later where Nesta has ascended the 20 or the 10,000 steps back up and this like cinematic moment it would be like a nesta pov rounding that final bend to the stairs upper door and there's just cassian waiting in his finest courtier attire leaning against the opposite wall uh, waiting for uh, nesta to return uh, i'm dying i know god just in his courtier outfit mm-hmm. and he's just like hey you know, his, like, shirt's open. Oh, it's open. Oh, it's open just enough. And, oh, his wings are just, like, fluttered just right. And he's mm. just, like, leaning there. Just, oh. Hands in his pocket. Oh, my God. And upon seeing him in a most unnesta like way, she throws herself into his arms. Yes, bitch. This is her man's. And, like the darkened city suggests, we learn it is indeed Starfall. And Cassian tells her she's just in time for the main event. She follows Cassa, but realizes she can hardly walk from the 20,000 steps. I get you, girl. She just did. But no problem, because Cassian swoops down and picks her up <sighs> like the big, thick zaddy that he is <sighs> and carries her the rest of the way to the roof of the House of Wind. Carry me. Just take me. I don't want to walk. You could carry me instead. I mean, I'm sure if you like your knees buckled, if you want to trick Jeff into it, you he just, could carry me. Just places. go like, oh, oh. Oh, he'll pick you up. You must carry me. Yeah, I'll just, yeah, I should start pretending like my legs don't work. <laughs> I, I I don't know why I haven't been trying that. I have tried to get him to bring me up the stairs to bed multiple times, and um, I muster the strength to get up there. <laughs> do, this, do the step challenge, and then he has to. 
Yeah, on on my staircase that is fourteen <laughs> steps. Can you imagine how? I mean, that's a lot. I think you might barf just from the spinning. Just around. going up and down and up and down fourteen <laughs> steps. <laughs> It would be funny for you to do a time lapse of that, though. Yes, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would be as successful as that TikToker was. So I'm fairly I believe sure. In you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. As usual, Reese is throwing a big old party up there on the roof, and if you'll recall, Nesta is still wearing her training leathers and covered in sweat amongst the formal throngs. But she doesn't give a shit, Mm-mm. and what a statement that is, because her entire life was about being guarded and gilded. Even when she was poor, she put on airs, but she's so happy just being in her skin. Maybe that's what I should wear to the Starfall Ball, maybe yes. some blue lemons. Yes, no, just dress like this. I could. That's just, like black tie formal affair. I just went hair and half bun, no makeup on, being like, I'm Nesta. I'm a fucking Valkyrie, all right? I worked hard to look like this. Um, no, I'm not doing that. What, should no. we, what are we going to wear, Jackie? I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. Where are we going to find ball gowns? We, well, we got to do two outfits. We got to talk about this soon. What are we going to wear? We're going to be each other's date. We need to like be not like matchy matchy, but like we need to look good together. It's not that I have no ideas. I have too many ideas. And I don't even know where to look. I don't know how to find a ball gown. You don't ever spend procrastination time looking up crazy outfits. I, I, do, I do, but it's more like track suits. Starfall ball. Starfall ball. Velour. What if I wore a juicy track suit? Everyone will know how much money I spent on it. I'll be like, look at me. Juicy. Juicier than the, your average woman. I'm trying to figure out how to work that into a an Akatar themed outfit, and I can't think of anything. <laughs> well, I'm not going to. Uh, I was about to say that gives away something. Juicy <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Th- that's all you all got. The, <laughs> from all the I'm sex. the pussies. I'm all the pussies. That's what I'll tell everybody. See, I'm juicy because I'm all the pussies. So. Let me oh into the star ball ball. Let me in. I'm all your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> to the black tie might, affair. I think yeah. we might be asked to leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that you're only admitted with formal attire, but. And not screaming that you're everybody's pussies. If, like, we're there, we were invited there, maybe we're just. We're Goshen. Just scream, I was invited! Yeah, yeah. Also, we will be screaming that into every, every 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Anyway, here Nesta is glowing. She's just glowing, like radiating from the inside in in awe of the sight of those mysterious glowing lights sipping across the sky. The whole gang is here, including some of the previous cast, like Callius and a pregnant Vivian. Remember him? Remember? They're going to have a baby. She noticed them looking a bit shocked at her when she arrived, but barely paid them attention. She hadn't realized that such beauty existed in the world, that she might feel so full from wonder it could hurt, like her body couldn't contain all of it. And she didn't know why she cried then, but the tears began rolling down her face. She catches a bit of the stardust and lets out a laugh, and then suddenly she hears Amron behind her. Remember there's first starfall, though? Yeah. How cute it was. Do you remember that? Dance with me. Oh. Amron was drawn by the surprising laughter coming from Nesta and likely was further surprised when Nesta gets on her knees and apologizes to Amran. Damn, lots of emotions flowing through Nesta right now. And it's a genuine, heartful, heartful? Heartfelt? Yeah. A genuine, heartfelt, vulnerable apology. And while Amran doesn't exactly reply because she's Amran, tears well up and almost pour from her eyes. Damn. For Amron, that's like crying, shitting, losing her mind. That's crazy. She almost shed a tear. So instead of saying, I forgive you to Nesta, she begins to explain to Nesta that when she arrived today, she found the house alive and that she thinks Nesta made it happen. Nesta's confused because she said the house is good and her magic only hurts people. But isn't that symbolism? Isn't it? Because as Amron explains... It's neither good nor bad. Amran put a hand above Nesta's heart. That's the key, isn't it? To know the darkness will always remain. But how you choose to face it, handle it, that's the important part. 
to not let it consume. Being thankful for the darkness because it allows you to see the light. Oh, This is especially pertinent due to SJM expressing that she was on her own mental health journey in the creation of this book. You can't get rid of all the darkness. The darkness is always going to be there. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, you just learn to live with it. And it also creates you. It's not the darkness. I don't ever want to say to somebody, you should go through horrible things. So no, I don't wish that on anyone. More rounded. It gives you. But. Stuff will happen to you in life. It's going to. You can't avoid it. And it's taking those things and making them make you stronger, make you feel like more empathy, more love, more appreciation for the good stuff. And there's just nothing quite like getting a mental health crisis under control. You know, cocaine is cool. But have you ever tried crawling out of an endless pit of your own mind? Whoa. It's a rush. I don't know if cocaine is cool anymore. It's not. But, you know, I couldn't think of another drug. But I like it. Ecstasy? Yeah. Yeah. MDMT? Sure. Yeah. Um, Nesta looks at her friend and back over to Cassian with such light in her eyes. Amran says, welcome back to the night court, Nesta Artron. And that's that. Feud over. Cute. That the book could end here, technically. Yes. Nesta's right at herself. The war can wait for another day. She and N- Cassian are in love. But no, that wouldn't be a real act. No, no, no. We in the middle of this story. We ain't at the end. We have another entire act, my friends. Yes. We jump in time and arrive at chapter 62, where the very first of the spring is peeking out in Volaris. There was nothing eventful in the building war happening in the first months of this year, but there's still tension awaiting what fresh hell might pop up. The mood hadn't been helped by a rare red star blasting across the sky one day. An ill omen, Nesta had heard the priestesses muttering. What's that supposed to be? Red star? I don't know. Is that something red solar glass? I don't know. What does it all mean? I don't know. I'm only about, I said, about to finish book two. So if this is something that's from Throne of Glass, I don't know if there's a connection or not. But I don't know what the Red Star means. Maybe we'll talk about it. Anyway. During the Crescent City conversation, I meant. Yeah. We can't do full Throne of Glass spoilers, though, because I I, we don't, I need we don't to know. prepare you, Natalie. Some of these theories might have a couple of Throne of Glass spoilers. Well, no, it. I don't want to do that. Then. I'm trying to keep them from you. Yeah, we can't do Throne but of Glass I, spoilers. I, in my stead, have shielded you. Knowing the truth. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want you to know and I want you to thank me for my strength um, because I am shielding you. I'm counting on you to keep them away from me. I guess it's kind of like cutting the ribbon. You're right. You know, I should have brought you a ribbon. Thank you. (laughs) Um, No, I just meant that I'm Valkyrie. 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 There is also the tension from Feyre's impending birth. Yikes. They still don't know what to do. Nesta keeps busy with her training and she thinks about how the blood rite is coming up. Thank the gods she doesn't have to go do that. Yeah, right, guys? But then a letter comes from Eris and Nesta and Cassian are sent to meet with him in the middle. Nesta looks at the mountain that had entombed so many Fae for 50 years. Feyre suffered there. It haunts her. Eris sees her watching it hover over the trio and explains that this sacred mountain is sisters, sister mountains, with the prison mountain and Ramiel, where the blood rite is held. So the three mountains, three sisters, huh? Oh! Three sisters and three sisters, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? What? Are you mm-hmm. what? I wonder what it means. I don't know. Eris continues to ponder why the Illyrians never bothered to check if Ramiel was carved out on the inside like the sacred mountain and the prison are. For Amarantha didn't carve it out by herself, but bedecked it to make it look like the Court of Nightmares. But it, it had already been carved out and, and made into hallways and passages so long ago that no fae can explain their presence. I do love just the idea of Amarantha coming in and be like, too drab. We need curtains in here. We need, oh, can we bring in some lamps? Like, just like make it cozier. Yeah. Oh, get, bring some shiplap in there, please. Yeah. But that's not why they're there that day to they're talk not about decorating. the mountains. <laughs> they're not decorating. Uh, yeah. Eris has some updates and questions. He tells them of his father's movements and then wonders where the harp is, as his father seems to be waiting for Nesta to find it. Cassian and Nesta are like, oh, oops. Uh, 
yeah, we already got that harp. Eris is not impressed. No, 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 no. In fact, he's pretty concerned, Kiss, that the Night Court secretly is possessing two of the three trove items. Which would seem alarming to the outside person that is supposedly, like, supposed to be on the inside with them and being like, oh, you already have it and you didn't tell me? These two things that can wield power over all of us? Yes. Uh, yeah, I get why he's not, yeah, not yeah. psyched about I'd be it. Upset. I'd be upset. There's a light sort of heated conversation back and forth between Eris and the couple. And then Nesta is surprised to hear a courtier's voice coming from Cassian. And then he talks like this. Hello. Hello. I am doing business. Yes, it's always started, which is a little like, okay, yeah. we get it, dude. We understand. He goes, Eris, you sweet simpleton, don't you worry a pretty little head about the trove. We have no business with conquests. Mm. And there's a, like, a heated back and forth between Eris and the couple. And Cassian is absolutely crushing it with his Reese impression. Yes. Eris doesn't want them to go after the crown so that they would have all three, but they give him nothing. Yes. A frustrated Eris then asks Nesta about his offer to her. But she completely rejects him in front of Cassian. Oh, my God. I bet Cassian feels so good about that. Oh, yeah. And I know we don't like Eris, but, man, that's cold. It's cold, It's so cold. That's fucking cold, bitch. Yeah. Because she basically is like, uh -uh. yeah, no, thanks. Gross. Yuck. Yuck. Get away from me. I know Eris deserves it. And I imagine Nesta is paying him back for all the times he's insulted Cassian. But, man, ouchie. Yeah. And it really strikes Eris true. Eris, for a moment, is like, no, but, like... I'm serious, Nesta. Are you sure? And so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm so glad to watch him go through it, though. He needs to. Even though I want to kiss him. I don't him. hate him. I don't think no. he's evil. No. But he I just still. He's been a bastard. He's allowed he's to the get bastard. his heart broken. Yes. He's allowed to get his heart broken. Eris tries to pick up his dignity with another brute retort around Cassian. Cassian smiled slowly. Thanks for your well wishes, Eris. And with that, Cassian swept Nesta into his arms and shot into the sky, the trees passing in a green blur, the sacred mountain lurking at their backs. Take me away! And Nesta is just so happy about this baller move he just pulled and she tells him he did really well just now and he reveals he wasn't doing a race impression as much as a nesta one ha she laughs and lays her head on his chest as he flies them home it's big thick hard chest must be pretty thick that is pretty hard <laughs> Instead of taking them to the house of wind he lands them in Valaris and tells her he'd like to take a walk with her this is a bit intimidating to Nesta, but with Cassian at her side, she can deal with it. Maybe even enjoy it. She's like, a walk? You mean going up and down the stairs? Because <laughs> stairs. I understand stairs. stairs? I understand sword. I uh, walk? <laughs> For fun? Yeah, I don't think she understands what to do. I mean, she's starting to learn how to have fun, which go for her. I think it's also intimidating to her because... I think it's like him slowly integrating her back to people. Yes. Like being around strangers and having to be looked at because she's with Cassian and like all that stuff. And Nesta even kind of gets into this as Cassian displays his affections publicly, puts his arm around it's her. It's kind of nice once you lean in as someone that until I met my husband was not publicly affectionate at all. In fact, I prided myself on not being publicly affectionate. And now that I am publicly affectionate, it's fucking great. Oh, yeah. and But I mean, like, there are also, I'm sure, with your past relationships, because it just always happens, is like, there's that moment, that moment when a couple is just going from, oh, or maybe we're try trying this out to then, like, holding hands in and front then, like, of people. And like, you're trying it out. Oh, it's a, it's a leap. It's a jump. It's yeah. a mystery. But also, it's, like, part of the fun of oh, dating. Yeah. No, it's like a butterflies moment yeah. in a new relationship. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, did you see them? They're holding yeah, hands. They're, they're just just oh, my God, he's, like, totally. Oh my god, they just kissed him. Oh my god, but how my heart would shatter into a million pieces watching Cassian holding hands with someone else. I think I'd die. <laughs> I'd be like, but me, but what about me? I know, but he has a mate. Are you, are you talking as Nesta right now? No, I'm talking as, as Jackie. Jackie, <laughs> Jackie the Fae, just living sad amongst the villagers. <laughs> just 
just sitting at the cof- the cafe table. Cassie, no, can you Cassie. Hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that are just going. Oh, oh, I like him. <laughs> um, but this is really cute. This is cute. It is cute. So yeah, Cassian has put his arm around her shoulders, and she's touched by his sort of claiming of her in public, but she can't shake off a feeling. She can't stop herself from asking if it undermines him as a warrior, being seen with a female in this way, and she, she says it to him. No, of course not, he says. It, is it seen as a problem for Reese and Feyre? She says, well, no, it's different with them, though. And um, I got to say again, girl here, you know what you're doing. I'm sorry, you do. Yes. She's kind of beating him here. Yes. Being like, Wants to hear him say like, no, babe. No, babe. I like you, babe. She cannot not address this thing that she knows is true, but she doesn't want to admit it. And so she's kind of trying to make him do it. Yeah. And so that's just my observation from one wounded girl to another. Yeah. But Hassian has but to. But also I understand, too, being in the part of the relationship where you're like not sure like it's like do you hundo like me do you like definitely like me like me because it's as someone that has issues with themselves it's hard to understand and trust the fact that someone finds you sexually attractive oh jackie and i think that so many people want to fuck you (laughs) do do you want to fuck me um i don't want to know i think it would make me more anxious i I, I understand where she's coming from in this as well of making sure that, like, this is what he wants. Yeah. And also what we're about to uncover uh. is she can't say it herself. Yes. Even though she knows it. And but Cassian has to address it because she's kind of cornered him. into yep. it. And he goes, why is it different, Nesta? Nesta kept her focus on the glittering river. Vibrant with the hues of sunset. Because they're mates. Cassian stops them both as they stand there looking on the quay next to the Sidra. Because they walk as she's like sort of saying that she's sort of walking away from him. He's like, what do you do? What, wait, did you can't just like be doing this and acting like nothing's happening. Right. And so they stop at the quay next to the Sidra. And I, yes, I had to look up what a quay I'm is. I'm glad. What is, can you, could you let us know what a quay is? Because, like, yeah, I mean, I also looked it up and I also know what it is. But, like, could you th- explain to us what a quay is? I can. It is, in fact, a concrete stone or metal platform lying alongside a, or projecting into water for loading and unloading ships. Oh, it's a dock. But it's a quay. It, oh, you crazy. Yeah, it sounds like you crazy, girl. Um, this actually helped me visualize their argument better because I always always had had I always had it on the bridge in my yeah. mind. But this actually makes more sense because they're a little ways off from other people. Okay, so they're sort of on their own on the side here, like next to the river. He challenges her at those words she just spoke. Oh yeah, we're not. Nesta pushes back, saying she doesn't even know what matehood it means. She didn't grow up fae. Cassin rightfully calls bullshit, but she ignores him and she starts walking away again. He calls her out for being afraid, but she denies it. What he, when he asks if it scares her to be seen with him in public, she, she thinks that, yes, it does. But not because she didn't want to be claimed by him. She can't say these words, but in her mind, she's thinking it's because of what it represents for her. Yes. Being back in the world. Yeah. What if she falls back into a pit once she accepts her place in reality again and hurts him? What if she can't do it? It's all fear-based. It is. And it is placed inside of love. Yes. But in those moments, it's really hard to see that. Yeah. Cassian isn't going to let her off from this truth. Say it, he demands. But she won't. He pushes her to say why he had to leave for a week after their night together at the river house. He goes on... You know and I know why we are insatiable around each other. Why there was that spiritual moment during our lovemaking. But she's frozen. She can't say it. I am your mate, for fuck's sake. (gasps) Cassian shouted, loud enough for people across the river to hear. You are my mate. Why are you still fighting it? She let the truth, voiced at last, wash over her. Cassian is in his emotions and points out that she promised him there would be no others for either of them ever again. Why does this bother you so? And I gotta say, she's being a bit of a Bella here. Whoa, we bring it up Twilight again? 
because Bella had no problem killing herself, agreeing to spend a millennia with Edward, but then is like, a, a wedding? wedding? I think. Okay, let's bump the brakes here. A yes. wedding? And also the fact that she chose at the age of 17 to be of who she wants forever, ever, ever. Which has also got to be scary, we'll say, for Nesta, who's what, like 27, 28 around this She's time around period? Yeah. And to think that, like, you know, we have to think about it in a different perspective of like saying that they're mates means like you are together. It's not like, oh, I'm together for, forever. Like you're together forever. But like if you are mated, I imagine there's something that like doesn't. It's different in that way where you just it's different. It's different. It's like when people ask you, like, how do you know you've fallen in love? Yeah. You just know. You know you you figure it out. And Nesta knows it, too, but she's yeah. too scared to say it. And I get you. It's very scary. But it is a very, like, sort of arbitrary part about it. It's like, why why did Bella care about the wedding? It was the label. But also you think she didn't have a label. Like, they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. There were none labels. And now we're mates? To go from none to mates? I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm playing devil. And it's not... That it's not deciding to be mates. They are they mates. Are. It's just saying the word mate. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, if you would just start calling me your mate instead of your wife. Then what? Then. He I wouldn't don't... be in the doghouse. No, he's not, he's not, dog in the dog house. House. not in the doghouse. He's very good to me. But now both she and Cassian are yelling and, oh, the town gossip they had for that night. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Did you see them? Did you see them up on the quay? It's Did like you see the way they were yelling at each other? It's like seeing Kylie and Timothy kissing for the first time. Oh, my God. That was actually a cute moment between the two of them that everyone blasted it's about fine. their love. It's fine. It was cute because at one point she like the like dust, like she like moves something on his collar and it was just, I don't know. It was actually a weirdly like it made me sad to watch it because I was like, oh, that was actually just like a vulnerable moment between the two of them oh yeah oh uh, yeah totally you know? and there was that little thing when they were talking and she's like playing with his necklace or whatever yeah. it's very cute yeah it's cute um i'm not saying i want to be friends with either one of them no. i'm just i just think it's cute i'm actually mad i compared kylie and Timote with cassie and Nesta. that's fine I'm mad at myself shamalama ding dong get out of here just <laughs> nesta explodes that matehood makes her fully a fae and that she still held on to this part of her humanity somehow that she was forced into this fey life, that the fey life found her. <laughs> she didn't find that fey life. Fey, fey life, life found, found her. her. I the, feel like I'm talking to the situation right now. And then she turned your broken pieces into masterpieces. Whoa. That is a um, that is a piece of artwork I bought from the situation store and sent to MJ because we were watching the Jersey Shore together. And I also have a piece of artwork that was created uh, probably by the situation sold in his store um, that says, we didn't come this far just to come this far. If only they had. Think the, about it. If only they had the situation to be there to moderate their fight. Oh, man. GTL introduced that into mm. the Illyrian oh, lifestyle. Oh, would definitely love Yes. That. They don't need the tea part, I guess. I don't. I can't imagine the Illyrian fitting. I guess they'd have to create tanning beds that would fit their wings. <laughs> no, I don't think the wings should go in. I they, they shouldn't, but I guess they do. Man, should know. we be dyeing our hair? Interesting. I don't know. It's just because I have virgin hair, so I'm I'm filled with fear. My hair lost its virginity very young. Noise. Um. But yes, she I can see the aspect of it that she was forced into the fey dumb and that the trauma of the violation of her body still lives within her. Yeah. Well, I didn't have a choice in being shackled to you either. Yikes. Uh, come on. Oof. If there was ever a challenge for Nesta, it's this. To feel those words like a knife and not immediately resort to insults and humiliations. Yes. And to her credit, she doesn't go there. But she does maybe something worse in Cassian's mind. I'm calling in my favor, she said. Panic floods Cassian's eyes. She's, of course, referring to the, her tattoo bargain that oh, she yeah. made with him for the one hour of training all those months back. She tells him he needs to stay away from her until she calls for him or one week 
whichever occurs first. And um, honestly, this is not very hard. This is not a terrible bargain. Yeah, but when you yearn for someone, when oh, you yearn for their every second of touch. But imagine if she would have said, I, I demand to break the bond or something. Oh, right? yeah. No, that would be very scary. This is more of a couple's fight. It's a spat. It's a spat. He tries to reach for her, but physically he can't. He can't come near her because the bargain is already being enacted. He strains against it, but there's nothing he can do. I wish she would have just like at least kissed him or something beforehand. Like it's something, some kind of goodbye. No, she's, she's pissed. She's pissed. I mean, that's mean. And he didn't mean it, but like she had probably hurt him before he said it. And saying like I'm shackled to you is kind of fucked up. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't mean he love. He's in love with her. I know, but he he was also wounded. He was wounded. He's wounded about her reaction about them being mates. About like why am I like? It's like how often is Cassian told he's not good enough? How often is he told that he's a bastard? That he's a, that he's not royalty? That he's not this? He's not that? And then like for her to act this way? Yeah. That's got to fucking hurt that like it makes sense. He said the barb that he did. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm not mad at him. I <laughs> love okay. you. <laughs> it's okay. It's yeah, okay. Um, so defeated, he launches into the sky. We cut to Nesta appearing at Emery's shop after Morgan had winnowed her there, who had asked no questions. Nesta throws herself at her girly crying her little heart out. I love the fact that she immediately thinks to like, I need to go cry to my girls. <sighs> Emery takes her in and they get in their robes and they have a cry set. Yes. Soon Gwen appears, apparently summoned by Emery. Gwen threw her arms around Nesta. I heard you might need us. Nesta was so stunned to see the priestess that she returned the hug. Because Gwen has left the library. Not only the library, but the whole ass mountain she's left. Uh -huh. That's a big deal. Yeah. They have a full slumber party night. Cocoa and desserts, reading wrecks, gabs. And before long, Nesta is feeling loads better. Even sheepish about how she'd acted towards Cass. She's already making plans to see him tomorrow to apologize. She can do this. Explain her trepidation. Yes. Cassian will understand. Yes. And he won't push her into it too fast. Hell, they have eternity. And that's the end of the book. No, it's not! Just kidding. A male scent filled her room. It wasn't Cassian, and it wasn't Reese or Asriel. Nesta hears Gwen scream down the hall, and she is up in mere moments. But it's too late, because a she covers her face with something that burned her nostrils, and then she remembers nothing. <gasps> Chapter 63 is only two pages, and we're with Cassian. He's been at the House of Wind as Nesta required him to be through the bargain, but he's already scheming to get around the words she said. He thinks about how he's going to get this conversation done with and that he'd let her know that he'd suspected she was his mate even while she was still human. <gasps> he would apologize, declare his feelings and face this fear of rejection. Because, again, she did bring up the fact that she was created against her mm -hmm. will that like the fact that he thought that she was his mate before she even became Faye, that's huge i think that is a huge like i think that will really change nesta's feelings about it that it's not just because of this thing that was done to you without your consent it was it was it's real and she probably also knows that because if you again and we'll talk about the bonus chapters she she had some otherworldly sense of him when she was still a, 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 old, a boring old person. <laughs> so Cass is also not like super upset. He's like, they're both ready to just like make. They'll apologize. But so he asks Reese to winnow him to Windhaven, which is he pried it out of more that she, that's where she took Nesta. But when he and Reese get to Emery's, they consent that they're not there from the outside. Panicked. Cassian immediately just knocks the door down. <laughs> Sick. He's Honestly, a, he's, I, big. he's big. He's big because he's big and he's looking for his mate. And then once they're inside, something else. Male sense. <gasps> Illyrian male sense. <gasps> Horror fills Cassian and he runs upstairs. Up here, he can scent fear and rage and blood. Fear bloomed so vast and broad he could barely breathe. It was a message to the females for thinking themselves warriors, and to him for teaching them, for defying the Illyrians' archaic hierarchies and rules. 
breeze came up beside him, his face white with that same dread. Devlin just confirmed everything. The blood rite began at midnight. And Gwyn, Emery, and Nesta had been snatched from their beds to participate in it. No! No! They didn't even ask to be a part of it! Not the blood rite! No! Um, they're fucking in it. Oh, no! Now they're in it. They got taken. Taken from their beds. They got taken. Taken from their sleepover. And you know what? Of all the traumas that have happened to me at sleepovers, never, I was never taken. taken. Blood right. Yeah, I was never taken to the blood right and forced to uh, be a part of some very scary game. So that's nice. Yet. Don't. Uh, is that what you're going to do to me if I come over for a reading while I read Crescent City 3? I don't know. Don't kidnap me, Natalie. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a baby. I'm just a baby. <laughs> you're not. You're a full grown Illyrian warrioress. All right, then Natalie also is going to get sent to the blood, right? This is very, this is very scary. Taken. Taken. Talk about also without their consent. No consent. It's goddamn Illyrian males. But I guess we're going to have to find out what happens next week. <laughs> What's going to happen? Oh, no. Are the Valkyries going to Valk? I guess we'll find out. <laughs>